guys, it's me Jasmine and today we're gonna be making some of BTS's favorite foods. They're honestly a bunch of foodies with a lot of favorite foods. They love Panda Express, McDonald's, but today we'll be focusing on some of their favorite Korean eats like Korean knife cut noodles, kimchi stew, a delicious and refreshing cold noodle, seafood, and a few different types of Korean barbecue. So let's get started. We're gonna start with RM, the leader of the group. One of his favorite foods is kaguksu, Korean knife cut noodle soup. I couldn't find specifically which variation of kaguksu that he really likes, so I'm doing a quick basic version of the Korean knife cut noodle soup. So to this pot of water, I'm gonna add my anchovies and my kelp. And we're just gonna bring this to a simmer over medium heat. Then we're gonna add in our zucchini, our carrots, and our shiitake mushrooms. And we're just gonna let that cook for like four to five more minutes and set it to the side. If you're able to make a kelp and anchovy broth beforehand with either a cold water soak or a lukewarm water soak, that'll really help enrich the flavor of the broth. But since we're doing a quick and easy kaguksu, this will do just fine. I've gone ahead and gotten some pre-made fresh knife cut noodles from the store. You can also buy them dry, really up to you. Buying pre-made noodles will save you about an hour in the kitchen. But if you have the time, I really encourage you to try making them. They're super fun, so satisfying to cut the noodles. But let's get to cooking the noodles. I'm gonna give it a little stir to keep them from sticking to each other. And once these noodles are done, I'm just gonna run them under some cold water to stop the cooking process. Now it's time to put everything together. I am going to serve mine in a stone pot. So I'm just heating that up real quick. Now I'm gonna add some noodles that we just boiled and then top it with the broth that we made earlier. For toppings, do everything to taste, but I'm gonna do chopped green Thai chili, some red chili, some garlic, and some soy sauce. It's so pretty. It's like so simple, yet so Delicious. Last but not least, we're gonna just add some salt to taste. I like sodium, it's my favorite food group. And some black pepper. It's time to eat. Babe, do you wanna come try this with me? These are long ass noodles. Yes. Mmm. Oh, the noodles are so silky. It's very garlicky, it's got a great kick. It feels like a very clean broth. I can't get over the soup, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to Jimin. One of his favorite foods is kimchi stew, otherwise known as kimchi jjigae. In a pot, I'm gonna add some vegetable oil over high heat. Let that heat up and then add in your onions, your garlic, and your pork belly until the onions are softened and the pork belly is slightly browned. Now let's go ahead and add our kimchi, but reserve the juices. And we're just gonna let that cook together for a few minutes until the kimchi has turned this dark red beautiful color. Damn, this smells really good. Can you enjoy food too much? Do you see this beautiful reddish brown color? So now we can add in our Korean chili flakes, sugar, salt, kimchi juice, our anchovy and kelp broth that I pre-made and give that a good stir. Now I'm gonna layer in some tofu. Then I'm gonna add in my shiitake mushrooms. I prefer to add in the tofu and mushrooms sooner rather than later because I like the flavor of the stew to actually infuse into these babies. Just gonna give this a quick little stir and then I'm gonna cover this and let it simmer for about 30 minutes. I don't actually have a lid for this so this is the next best thing. The kimchi jjigae is done. It looks amazing. It's literally still bubbling because the pot is keeping it nice and hot. I'm gonna top mine with some green onions. I like a lot. It's not even that much. More. Great. All of it. Yeah. Some sesame oil. And it's time to dig in. Babe, we got another one. Mmm. Oh wow, that's so good. Dare I say I have outdone myself? No, I think that's pretty fair to say. Mm, so good. Let's move on to the next one. One of his favorite foods is Korean marinated short ribs, also called karbi. I have my short ribs here that I prepped by soaking in cold water for about 30 minutes just to get rid of any bone fragments. This one's super easy to make. We pretty much just need to make the marinade. So I have my blender here. We're just gonna add in our pear, onion, ginger, garlic, soy sauce, water, brown sugar, honey, sesame oil, and we're just gonna blend that until it's nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna pour it over my short ribs. That pear in there serves a very important function. It 
helps break down the meats a little bit to make them nice and tender. Now I'm just gonna make sure that all the ribs are evenly coated. And we're gonna put this in the fridge and let it marinate for at least four hours, preferably overnight. Our short ribs are done marinating, so let's go ahead and start cooking. I'm using this round KBBQ grill. Obviously you don't need one. If you have a nonstick pan, that's more than fine. We're in for a ride. Kirby is so good. There's like this cartilage around the bone that if you gnaw on, oh my God, all your primal instincts through the roof, man. All right, our grill is nice and hot. Let's go ahead and place our short ribs on the grill. So one thing with cooking carby with a nonstick pan is that there's no drainage hole like there is here. It can lead to boiling your meat, which is like, it's fine, but it's just not as bomb. So a hack is to take a paper towel, clamp it with your tongs, and kind of wipe away the sauce if it's really coming high. These are looking amazing. Let's go ahead and flip them. Oh yeah, another one and another one. All right, I think you get it by now. And as they finish up cooking, you could just cut them in between the bones. Once the meat is cooked to your liking, it's pretty much done. For plating, I'm laying down the meat on a small bed of onions. That'll help soak up any excess oils. Always serve yourself more than they do at restaurants. That is the dream. Okay, so now all I need to do is top it with some green onions. I love her. She looks so ready to be eaten. Okay, let's dig in. Mmm. Oh my god. You've <laughs> outdone yourself. <laughs> it's like sweet, garlicky, umami y. Okay, next one. Korean barbecue continues. This one is prugogi, one of J Hope's favorite foods, and is one of the most popular types of Korean barbecue meats as well. Honestly, it's one of the ones that you just can never go wrong with. I have three pounds of thinly sliced ribeye steak here. Same thing as the karbi, it's very easy to make. All we need to do is just make the marinade. All right, so in a blender, we are just gonna combine our onions, our Asian pear, 10 cloves of garlic, ginger, brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, and black pepper. Then we're gonna blend it up. All right, our marinade looks nice and smooth. Let's pour the marinade over the beef. Toss in our sliced white onion and green onions. Now we're just gonna mix it up with our hands. Make sure everything is evenly coated. And then we're gonna throw this in the fridge to marinate for at least an hour, but again, preferably overnight. The meat is done marinating and it's time to cook. I'm using my grill again, but you can use a non-stick skillet, no problem. Don't overcrowd your pan. It'll lead to boiled purgogi, not bomb, very sad. Finally, we're just gonna top it with some green onions and some sesame seeds. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. I like how charred the beef is. I feel like char really makes Purgogi, extra delicious. Purgogi, can't go wrong with it. Next food, Tamgyeopsal. This is grilled pork belly and is one of Suga's favorite foods. There's not really much to prep here besides making the sauces. This sauce over here is Samjang. It's a popular Korean dipping sauce. It's salty, it's sweet, it's got a fermented soybean paste in there. I've been told many times actually that it's very funky smelling, but when people eat it, it's umami heaven, I'm telling ya. There's also another very popular dipping sauce, super easy. It's literally just salt, sesame oil, and pepper. Once you heat up your grill, we can get to putting the pork belly. So first, what I like to do is take a piece of the pork, take it fat side down, and just kind of rub it all over the grill. So we're gonna cook the pork until it's browned on both sides. Fun fact, this is called samgyeopsal, and it translates pretty much to three-layered meat, and it refers to, you know, how it looks. The fat, the meat, the fat, good stuff. This is like such a popular meat to order at Korean barbecue. The only qualm I have with this is that it takes too long to cook. I can't wait that long. It's like cooking right in front of you and you, have to, you just have to wait. All right, let's give these a flip. Woo! Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, if it's not crispy like this, I don't know what you're doing, man. This is the way to eat it. Let's plate this. I'm gonna pair it with some perilla leaves, red leaf lettuce, sliced jalapenos, sliced garlic, and we have our pork belly, some super crispy, some moderately crispy, and of course our sauces, the samjang and the salt, pepper, sesame oil. Honestly, I'm so grateful to be looking at this platter. It's beautiful. Life's what you make it. So let's make it rock. Did anyone get that reference? Am I too old? Let's eat. Let's make our sam, which is a wrap. I like the red leaf lettuce. Okay, cheers. So bomb. Mm -hmm. 
Next one. This is one of Jin's favorite foods and is a Korean cold noodle called naengmyeon. Let's get started with a broth. In a pot, I'm gonna add my flank steak, green onions, white onions, dried seaweed, ginger, garlic, rice wine, soup soy sauce, Korean beef stock, also called tashida, sugar, sea salt, black pepper, and water. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for an hour. All right, so the broth is cooled to room temperature. I've taken out the beef link to let that chill as well. So here in this other pot, I have put a few layers of cheesecloth over it and I am gonna take the broth that we made earlier and pour over it. So I really want a super clean and smooth broth. So that's why I'm using a few layers. This cloth is gonna be able to catch all the black pepper. So the broth is gonna be super, super smooth. Look at how beautifully smooth and clean this broth is. I chilled it and now I'm gonna add my water radish kimchi brine. A lot of Korean locals love it so cold that they'll put ice to make it oh, super, super cold. I recommend it. Now that our broth is done, we just need to boil the noodles. So this dish does use a specific type of noodle. These are naengmyeon noodles and it's like a buckwheat sweet potato hybrid. They boil super fast, like two to three minutes and they are done. I am going to strain these, run them under cold water until they are nice and cold and then we can get to assembling. The noodles are done. I'm gonna go ahead and place them into the center of our bowl. Now I'm gonna pour some broth around the noodles, then top it with a few slices of the beef link we use to make the broth, pickled radish, cucumbers, half a hard boiled egg, and toasted sesame seeds. That is so refreshing! Oh wow. Next dish! All right, let's move on to Jungkook, and one of his favorite foods is hue, which you might already know as sashimi. Koreans call it hue, and really the main difference is that sashimi is served with soy sauce and wasabi, and hue is commonly served with this vinegar red chili paste called chogochujang, more colloquially referred to as chojang, same word, just a little bit shortened. Here's my platter. We have a variety platter here, tuna, salmon and halibut. The only thing missing is our chojang, so let's make that. And I'm gonna add a quarter cup of gochujang, which is our Korean red chili paste, two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of rice vinegar, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of minced garlic, and one teaspoon of toasted sesame seeds. Now we're just gonna mix our sauce until it's well combined. Be careful when mixing because the chili paste is pretty thick, so it sloshes around and I like pretty much always spill. Not today though. Today we're winning. I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself. Some people like their paste thicker. Some people like it thinner. If you want your sauce to be thicker, just add less water. Great, now that this is well combined, let's grab our platter again. I am so freaking excited because this is also one of my favorite foods. Let's freaking dig in. All right, so a few ways to eat this. We can wrap it in the red leaf lettuce, the perilla leaf, or just eat it with rice. Jungkook, you've got great taste. Okay, cheers. Mm. All right, I'm gonna try to get this right. Okay. Well, now I have to try that too. <laughs> All right, guys, that was a lot of food we had today. A lot of traditional Korean eats, noodles, noodle soups, kimchi jjigae, Korean barbecue of all sorts, and even seafood. Which one was your favorite today? Definitely the kalbi. What about you? I mean, one of my favorite foods is sushi and sashimi, so obviously the what. Well, let us know in the comments below what dish you think looks the tastiest, and if you make any of them, make sure to snap a picture and tag me on Instagram because I wanna see. And also, if you wanna learn more about BTS's favorite foods, make sure to check out my friend Joelle's video on BuzzFeed Video where she eats like BTS for a week. And BTS, if you're watching, you know you should hit me up. I know how to make all your favorite foods. Come hang out, I'll cook for you. Let's eat. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Oh, yes!